In 2019, the United Nations Environment Program, in collaboration with one of my favorite channels, Chris Kazak, released this video on microplastics. Essentially, microplastics are small particles of plastic with different chemical compositions, some of which are tailored to make your plastic bottles transparent, potentially making you less manly, and for some, flexible, which was linked to cases of cancer. The harmful effects of microplastics became a widespread concern just right before COVID became the widest spread concern. But perhaps a lot more has changed since then. I will get to see how much it compares to right about now. We just don't happen to ingest these microplastics using plastic straws or plastic cutting boards, plastic cutlery. It's also found in the food chain and the fish that we eat. Because like what we throw in the ocean comes back the other way around. I can safely say that I have one fear and it is losing the ability to brain or gaining the ability of forgetfulness or not being able to think for myself anymore like relying on ChatGPT to construct my sentences for me or just letting time take its course and eventually bestow upon me dementia basically dementia is just a group of conditions where your brain forgets to do its job not being able to retain memories is one thing and not knowing or remembering how to use a spoon and a fork to get food from your plate to your mouth is another. And the fact that as we age, our mental status gradually will decline and then we just start to lose a grip of reality as tax for living in this world long enough. So like imagine being hijacked in the middle of the sea and not being the captain of your ship anymore. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. I'm like a third or a quarter of the way there depending on which statistic I'd like to scare myself with the most. Like it seriously gets worse over time and the crazy thing is we can't do anything to reverse that yet as of now. This concern has been knocking on me ever since I saw the first signs because the people I've lived with at home before I moved were like 50 and above. My grandmother is 93 now, God bless her. And it's so concerning to me because our bodies really do get frail and we need so much help from other people. And I have this nasty habit of being hyper independent. So like asking for help is just so embarrassing for me. So probably this is like a small reminder that we shouldn't take anything for granted, especially the state that we are in now. It's just alarming how much we unconsciously or subconsciously let ourselves go. But it's not like we can't do anything about it. My dad used to do a lot of Sudoku on his free time. His job required him to travel a lot, so he had a lot of these big or small Sudoku books, but I remember this really, really thick one that he used to bring at home. And I remember as a child, I tried solving the puzzles, but I literally did. I thought it was math. I thought we had to add up the numbers. But seeing as I struggled and I was very, very wrong, <laughs> he got the, I don't know, the fatherly instinct to teach me something, which was Sudoku. That's like one of my only three fond memories of him. Another one being in the car rapping along to Eminem and the other catching him in my own room with his mistress. So as an act of what can be considered as rebellion, I took his book, I made it my own, I solved it, but I did this act of rebellion not because I was old enough to understand what was happening anyway, but because I just grew to like puzzles. <sighs> With that being said, he probably would have been a cool dad instead, but he chose to be horrible to the women in his life, so that's on him. Dementia is not necessarily Alzheimer's, but Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. It is the most common form, and Alzheimer's also is the most common neurodegenerative disease. Alzheimer's disease starts off as a loss of memory. In Tagalog, we say ulianin, like you forget where you place the thing. And this can slowly lead to loss of other cognitive functions like speech or spatial recognition. And since everything in the brain is involved, it also involves like personality changes, like someone just snaps. But all in all, it just leads to the loss of 
doing activities of daily life. Like you can't be independent and live on your own. You will always need help. So yeah, there are seven clinical stages of Alzheimer's disease reinforced by the NIH if you want to check it out, which is also linked down below. The way the brain gets Alzheimer's is based on two theories. The amyloid cascade hypothesis says an accumulation of amyloid plaque just clogs your brain up. Meanwhile, the tau hyperphosphorylation hypothesis says that tau aggregates are clogging up the insides of your neurons, inducing neurofibrillary tangles, making them dimmer and weaker and eventually dead. Although genetics and environmental factors do contribute to the risk or the occurrence of AD or Alzheimer's disease, the biggest risk factor really is just age. 30% of people aged 85 and above, also from the NIH, may experience like even the slightest symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Age really is a blessing bestowed upon a few, but even this blessing has its caveats. In 2022, Chris Hemsworth, affectionately referred to as the better Chris and the best Hemsworth, was found to be at risk of Alzheimer's disease despite his age. He apparently has two copies of the ApoE4 gene, one from each parent, which increases his likelihood of developing Alzheimer's disease. Okay, knowing the consequences of AD and knowing the fact that you are probably on track to, as they say, losing your marbles, is terrifying. According to this Vanity Fair article, the way that he copes with knowing that perhaps his time of being able is limited to a certain extent is just not taking anything for granted. It really is a big slap in the reality knowing the fact that we are not able-bodied or able-minded for as long as we might like or think. And that we don't even know what tomorrow will bring or if we're even promised one. So, what do microplastics have to do with all of this? In the psychiatric times, microplastics are only those plastic pieces smaller than 5 millimeters, while nanoplastics are those smaller than 1 micrometer. Together, they are abbreviated as MNPs, or micro and nanoplastics. They aren't just like bits and pieces of solid plastic being lodged into every one of our crevices, but like big bad wolf radiation. It's in the air. Yes, you heard it here, folks. You can sniff your way into brain damage as if we didn't learn anything from asbestos ceilings. So once they're already in us, they can obstruct blood flow, limiting your body's ability to body and your brain to brain. So yes, like now, we've linked these microplastics into being contributing factors of neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease. Basically, unlike war, microplastics and nanoplastics are inevitable. At least according to Stanford Medicine. They're in your kitchen, they're in your walls, they're in your Sheen and Timu purchases, they're, they're in your makeup. They're also in the cover your ears, in the marine life that we eat. So even though us individuals have this moral or social and personal responsibility of saving the turtles, These big corporations still make bigger waste. We're surrounded by plastics as if we don't have any other choice. And that's one of the prices that we pay for convenience. So what can we do? It's a fundamental fact that we can control our actions regardless of outcome. Like not just switching to paper straws, but being mindful of what we can do to strengthen our bodies and our minds to at least minimize the effects of something inevitable like aging. Like your muscles, your brain should also be exercised. Our body basically uses the same rupture and repair principles in physical gains when we want to see our muscles grow or with our minds even, like the concept of anti-fragility. The Alzheimer's Research and Prevention Foundation have put a risk percentage decrease in developing Alzheimer's. Regular physical exercise can reduce it by 50%, especially in women aged 40 to 60, which may have something to do with the event of menopause where your body goes near cold turkey on estrogen. A recommended dose is 150 minutes per week of combined cardio and strength training. Neurologists credited by the same foundation said that mental exercises can also reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease by up to 70%. 
And these mental exercises can be Sudoku or crossword puzzles or chess, which I have been into recently. Perhaps participating in online discourse as long as it's healthy, you both have been using your brains and you have a penchant for critical thinking and you separate facts from feelings and emotions that yes you're good to go you are doing your mental gymnastics of course food and diet can also help reduce the risk of your degenerative diseases like omega-3 fatty acids nuts and legumes and even chocolate or food with antioxidants that help reduce stress buildup in the body that's the direction your diet should be heading like, just imagine the amount of microplastics that everyone's been inhaling all this time. And the chance that we usually don't pressure ourselves into eating or being healthier just because we're, we're fine. We think we're fine, but we're not. Fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Yeah, I guess that's it. Stay healthy, I guess. Do something.